so uh, welcome everyone uh, we are happy to see you here and uh, this uh, this whole uh, session uh, not exactly session this whole uh, event will also like encourage you to try with uh, google cloud services and that will somehow help in your uh, google cloud career ahead and in the your deployment things anyways who uh, who i uh, myself piyush uh, i am the cloud mentor for uh, gdsc maharaja agarsen institute of technology let's just go ahead uh, okay today we will uh, discuss about uh, the career in cloud and uh, we will uh, ultimately get to the main thing what is the cloud anyway what's this jargon thing we talk about and uh, ahead of that we will uh, talk about we will see about how we will uh, manage and interact with the google cloud platform and uh, its resources how will we interact with it and in the end last but not a lot the least uh, we will uh, do Uh, a demo of the our quick lab uh, quick labs credentials and we will do some basic tasks which some of you have already done anyways and after that we will uh, go to the q and a session so uh, preparing for cloud careers uh, as we all have been uh, hearing from like like past 4 5 years there's a boom coming into the cloud there's a boom coming into the cloud uh, but ultimately uh, cloud is just not something which uh, um, like you need uh, you still need a little bit of a uh, technical knowledge for it so google uh, actually comes with uh, some certifications for it and uh, that is why it is becoming essential in higher education these days you know we are doing btech uh, computer science engineering i have uh, heard in some universities they have also uh, introduced some cloud computing courses as well in uh, btech as well as in mtech so cloud is uh, definitely coming into the mainstream uh, education also and these are some certification pro uh, certifications provided by uh, the google itself they these are some foundational uh, courses uh, associate and finally the professional in which you have to at uh, like figure about the uh, networking stuff you know foundation in foundational and some basic courses we just uh, have to uh, know like uh, how are we going to deploy something on uh, like on what product are we going to deploy our application but uh, as as we go professional like if you are already doing cloud tracks in the cloud track 1 there are a, like very basic basic how to deploy nginx something but as you go into the next and next sessions it goes it gets a little bit more technical uh, how to handle the network, networking part and so on so uh, this is our uh, cloud engineering track in the in this 30 days of google cloud um, event uh, as we were as some guys were talking they have uh, done like second or third quest completely so that's uh, very nice actually today we are um, going to like discuss about this first uh, getting started track but uh, as soon as you get comfortable with a gcp and quick labs you're going to uh, it 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 will get a little bit easier for you to like get started you will know how to uh, where to create your resources and so on and then after that it will just go a uh, little bit smoother i'd say anyways so before we uh, before we start anything with the cloud let's just discuss what is this cloud anyway from the last 5 to 6 years we have been hearing this cloud 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 certainly to some people it's literally a jargon as well they just they don't really know what to do with the cloud what is the cloud anyways so uh, if we if we get to the least basic part cloud is the uh, i'd say technology or is just an infrastructure basically to get your uh, application running from development to production when you go to production you get some uh, ways like how where am i going to deploy my application and cloud is one of this one of the way i mean you can also you can also uh, like uh, host a server in your company premises like in in deployment terms we say on site hosting but uh, in cloud there are some benefits we will talk about these benefits uh, in this slide basically so cloud computing has uh, some fundamental characteristics which makes it uh, better i'd say like these are its advantages so in cloud the uh, first thing is on demand self services like 
we will also uh, uh, like we will also see this in action today for cloud we don't have to order any physical service we don't have to go anywhere we can just click a button we can just uh, like run a command and our application and our um, instance will get created in any part of the world we want in any uh, location so that's the self service we don't have to go anywhere for it it's just very it's kind of a virtual uh, machine yes it is a virtual machine but we don't have to do any of the manual lifting for that and uh, the network access, yes, because uh, in on-site as well as like uh, if I'm on my laptop right now and I am developing an application, I will not be able to present this application to everywhere in the world. I mean, I might screen share, but that's not the point of an application. I want my application to be uh, accessible from everywhere. And that's what the cloud actually provides. All the services are um, accessible from everywhere. Like you just set up and you're done. Uh, your application is now live. Congratulations! You can all over. Uh, you can just uh, paste your link or uh, IP address, whatever. Your everyone can access with that. The third, and uh, it is actually uh, um, what would we say? It's beneficial for environment, maybe. Yes. Okay. So resource pooling. Uh, what happens is uh, like Google. Let's just say, or there's any uh, cloud company. They have some they deploy our applications ultimately on a physical server, right? I mean, without a physical server, nothing can be run. Uh, cloud is also physical, but it's just some uh, management perspectives of it. Okay. So in resource pooling, what happens is, uh, like, for example, uh, if you are uh, if you are doing some production work, you have to buy a server, right? And a server also uh, comes with some environmental costs, uh, manufacturing costs, let's say. The, it's going to produce a lot of heat as well. You will uh, need AC, air conditioners for your server rooms and all. But you don't have to manage all of that uh, with cloud. Cloud is just you just pay for the service and uh, they they deal with uh, uh, where to place your services and where to uh, like run your infrastructure or something. So uh, ultimately what happens is they have a lot of resources and they get pooled together. So you get the combined benefit of all of that. I mean, if one node goes down, your service will just get migrated to another node and you will not even notice. Your uptime will be, your uptime will not be affected by all of that. Coming on to the rapid elasticity, elasticity feature, uh, it actually helps when uh, your traffic goes suddenly high at times and when you know your traffic, it's not really great. Uh, it's not really high in at some times. Like if we just say right now, um, if someone posts a YouTube video, it might not get that much hits because uh, it's not weekend yet. It's a weekday. People maybe of us like in their offices or on their work or on somewhere like in the metro or something. Some might be traveling to. So uh, reach will not be that high. That's why traffic uh, might not be that high, I'd say. But if something happens on a weekend, let's just say on Saturday or Sunday, traffic will be a lot higher and we will know that, uh, okay, at this point of time, if we're doing that, our application is we are going to receive a ton of traffic. So we should scale our infrastructure up. So in that sense, it's quite elasticable. We can anytime scale vertically upwards. And if we know our traffic is not much, we can just come back down. So that's the very great benefit I'd say of cloud. You don't have to prepay for anything. Everything is uh, built at what you consume and that is the measured service you just pay for what you use you don't have to pay anything extra and uh, <clears throat> you might have also heard this term like data is uh, everything for a company hindi mein ek uh, ek kahawat bhi hai jiske paas data hai wahi sabhi ka data hai <laughs> i don't know where i heard it from but uh, yeah anyway so uh, as we know if you guys have, uh, I mean, you certainly might have figured it out, but ek do din pehle abhi Facebook kaise down hua, uh, kafi, like data was uh, not accessible for, for everyone. So anyways, I'm not going to, uh, I mean, they, I mean, certainly, you know, faults happen. That's, that's still okay. But uh, ultimately uh, that is our goal that our data should not be unavailable because our data is everything to us. And 
let's just say Amazon, if their site goes down for like uh, an hour or two, a lot of uh, orders will be uh, hindered. Uh, like a billion dollar loss might be, might be on the rise. So yes, every company is a data company these days. Data is essential to everyone. And in the cloud, we, uh, we make ways to make that data highly available so that there is no, not a single point of failure anywhere. We just have to, uh, we just have to ensure that if one thing gets hit, our data should be available to, uh, to all over the world. <clears throat> okay, coming ahead, uh, these are some some basic uh, like uh, uh, platforms. I just say, how are we going to deploy? A, let's just say our application or anything. You might have heard these terms in uh, studies as well. Uh, I don't remember which subject it comes, but uh, I think it's it comes in software engineering something. Anyways, so the first thing uh, uh, which uh, comes uh, literally uh, in the cloud as well as uh, off the cloud, it's just infrastructure as a service. Uh, in this, what happens is uh, you just get your infrastructure, you get a CPU, memory, storage, networking, bandwidth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just get the like lay in layman terms, you get a whole computer uh, at you. Like, okay, take this computer, utilize it however you want, you just pay us for that computer. So that is called infrastructure as a service. The user need to uh, manage all of the uh, operating system applications. Let's just say if he deploys a Linux on it, if, if, if he deploys Linux on it and a web server on top of that, and if something happens to that web server, if something happens uh, to the configuration of that, uh, the cloud vendor will not be uh, Cloud vendor will not be, you know, responsible for whatever the user does because the cloud vendor is uh, providing that infrastructure to you. Now you are free to manage, uh, however you like. This uh, this might uh, be a little bit cheaper, but one one thing which happens is you pay for uh, what you get allocated. I mean, you can say that, oh, okay, I don't use this uh, that much. This CPU I use like like 10% of that CPU, please build me for 10%. That's not going to happen. You get uh, allocated whole of it, you're going to build for the whole of it. Next thing is uh, platform as a service. In this, uh, you don't uh, care about the infrastructure. You don't know uh, where your uh, services are hosted. How is the data coming? You just uh, you just uh, like get provided some access. Uh, I just say example for that is like a database on the cloud. We all know we uh, deploy databases locally, let's just say MySQL or MSSQL. But uh, what happens uh, if we uh, change it to a PaaS, a platform as a service? What will happen is we just get some uh, database credentials. OK, uh, upload your data over there. That's your point. Don't care about uh, infrastructure at all. So that's the platform as a service. Uh, it's also it comes handy when you want to just host your website, but don't want to uh, care about how, how to manage all of that infrastructure anyways next thing is software as a service uh, software as a service is uh, relatively uh, common these days uh, the prime examples of that will be uh, gmail google drive uh, youtube google sheets uh, google docs etc cetera, etc cetera. in these uh, you just uh, you just like pay for that particular software uh, like uh, google drive also has a fees after the initial 15 gb limit there's i guess uh, 10 dollar or something for uh, one TB cloud storage. Anyways, in that you just uh, get access to the software endpoint. You, you don't know where the data is coming from. You don't know where my data is coming to, like on what physical location is it's going at the end. You just have to supply that data and get the data from it. So that is the uh, software as a service models. Anyways, uh, okay. Coming ahead, these are the Google Cloud, uh, Google Cloud uh, point of presence and network endpoints. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of network locations probably all over the world. Yes, it's available in all, all the continents. Uh, we can see Africa, Asia, Australia, North America and South America. Anyways, Europe as well. So why uh, let's uh, let's just ask this question: Why are so many locations needed? Why don't we just have a single location and just call it a cloud? Why are there so many segregated locations? The answer to that is response times. Uh, we want our application to be as fast as possible. But uh, if our application service is in the United States and we are going to access it from India, 
Uh, it's not going to uh, be a, a I mean, it certainly can be a f uh, fast. It's, it certainly will be fast, but we just want it to be fast uh, as possible. Uh, the prime example of that would be uh, if you go, uh, have you guys uh, played PUBG? I mean, <laughs> that's that's not really a question, but uh, if you guys uh, play, there's earlier there used to be option. Usme aise hota tha ki server select hum kar sakte the Asia, uh, America, Europe, etc., etc. But you know ki agar main India server mein khel raha hu and by chance due to some network issue. अगर मेरी पिंग लाइक लेट्स से 100 200 प्लस चले जाती थी तो बहुत इश्यूज होते थे बहुत लैग वैग होना शुरू हो जाता था सो दैट इज द थिंग यस सो दैट इज द थिंग वी लाइक इफ आवर यूजर क्लाइंट बेस इज इंडियन वी वांट टू इंश्योर दैट आवर सर्वर्स आर इन इंडिया और एज क्लोज एज इंडिया एंड फॉर्चूनेटली गूगल क्लाउड रिसेंटली हैज लॉन्च्ड अ दिल्ली लोकेशन एज़ वेल अर्लियर दे यूज्ड टू हैव आई गेस मुंबई एंड चेन्नई नाउ वी हैव दिल्ली एज़ वेल सो if we are serving something to our north indian client base we can easily deploy an instance in new delhi so <clears throat> as we were uh, as we are let's just discuss about uh, compute services so there are uh, a lot of these uh, engines uh, in this uh, information session we are just going to uh, be a uh, very brief about it uh, these we will uh, certainly take uh, another session uh, regarding this regarding uh, kubernetes engine and how all of these uh, functions like uh, help in what aspects yes and uh, for now we will just uh, see a little bit about compute engine like when we will uh, do our demo session and even in that we will uh, do some task from our uh, first quest and these uh, kubernetes and app engine etc these are in some different task uh, in different quest i guess in quest 2 or 3 something so it's just uh, uh, take a brief of it uh, compute engine is nothing but uh, like you get a, a, a computer a virtualized machine at your at your front you can just uh, do a lot of services with them kubernetes engine are basically uh, to uh, highly available uh, compute services so in in that you just create a cluster of machines and then you basically serve your application ultimately app engine is just like a platform as a service alternative for this uh, compute engine like if you want to deploy an application you just have to uh, submit your code in that and uh, app engine will take care of that how to uh, present your application to the world cloud functions are uh, if you want to uh, do some like cron jobs as in linux we know uh, there are some cron jobs if you want to perform a task at let's say 12 am like email all my customers like email all my order status etc you can just uh, do uh, with that and cloud run uh, we will uh, cover all these things in the upcoming sessions so for now let's just uh, focus on <laughs> compute engine in our demo lab so otherwise <laughs> there it will get a uh, little bit of confusion anyway these were the compute services and uh, these are the storage services which google cloud offers uh, cloud big table is just like for uh, it's mostly for uh, machine learning stuff so it's big data and something cloud storage is just uh, google drive but uh, in inside the google cloud platform cloud sql is uh, as the name suggests it's just a mysql or postgre sql uh, similar to mysql and postgre sql uh, hosted on the cloud cloud spanner is again some advanced functionality with the uh, databases and data store is for unstructured data it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the sql format and uh, these uh, services are for big data and machine learning uh, perspectives uh, uh, unfortunately i'm not going to be able uh, i'm not going to be able to cover uh, all of these but uh, we will certainly uh, cover these things when we will have a session on machine learning probably by aditya or riha anyways <clears throat> let's just uh, anyways okay uh, so that was with the uh, basics of these and now we will going to start with our uh, cloud uh, like platform in our google cloud platform we will going to see what uh, what the what functions do we have on the hand so first and foremost we have four ways to interact with the google cloud platform uh, the first and foremost thing is uh, the one we all probably use uh, in the quick labs 
also there's this google cloud console uh, it's a web, web panel and in the quick labs when we start our lab we get access to some credentials and there's a button open console so it's essentially this first part and the second thing is a uh, google cloud shell or a software development kit it's basically a command line interface we do uh, we do run some commands on our on our some quests uh, when it asks us to run some commands it's uh, cloud shell is just for uh, fine tuning some things which are not really not just necessary available on the panel in the panel it gets a, a, a bit clumsy to add all that information so we if we have to fine tune something we can just uh, make an api call with this uh, rest space api uh, platform or we can just uh, run some command there's also a, a mobile app for it uh, we're going to view it shortly anyways so this is the uh, google cloud platform this is how it looks like in your uh, in your web browser it uh, gives uh, centralized uh, access for it centralized console for all your uh, project data it uh, shows you how many api requests you've been uh, making with all those and you can just uh, simply view all your project resources and all we are going to see it uh, in the demo shortly uh, <clears throat> logging to the cloud console uh, if if you are already doing your um, cloud quests you have uh, already seen this uh, panel there are billing estimates and error if any error just it's just a basic dashboard of your whole google cloud platform and uh, okay there's this uh, three dots button in the on the top left and if you open that you get uh, access to all those areas like uh, on top of that there will be compute services and then kubernetes engines and then cloud functions whatever uh, thing you might want to do and uh, below uh, after the compute there will be some storage and after that there will be some machine learning uh, tools available and uh, in the Google Cloud platform, everything which we do is associated with our project ID. This is uh, essentially uh, helpful for you know segregating your uh, projects and resources of that projects. So if you are uh, like if you are deploying uh, one virtual machine for one project and another for another project, uh, like and you receive a single bill of all of that. If you receive a single bill of all of that, then sometimes it gets uh, like. A, a bit confusing right why am i getting billed for these resources so in the google cloud there is a thing called project and every uh, resource which you create has to be associated with the project for uh, billing reasons uh, too and also it i mean uh, one more thing actually i have to add it uh, this does not really necessarily apply to uh, quick labs because in quick labs we just get a uh, demo access there's not really any billing involved uh, by itself but uh, there's this thing just keep in mind when you start with actual uh, google cloud uh, like you register a cl cloud account and a billing account you just have to uh, keep in mind all of these things so yes uh, this is how we will create the project uh, in the dashboard there will be this project and by clicking that we will actually we will either uh, click this new project button or we will just select our existing project but again this these steps does not really apply to quick labs so if you're just doing labs then your project is most probably uh, created by default uh, as soon as you start your lab and this is how billing works uh, your bills get uh, generated uh, per project basis and yeah, essentially you just want to add a credit card or something but uh, that's not the point right now for quick labs in quick lab you just have to uh, see the demo of how everything works so yes that is these are all things are actually available in your google cloud platform and this is the google cloud google cloud uh, shell uh, it it gives a uh, 5 gigabytes of uh, persistent storage in your uh, like it does not bill for you for uh, that google cloud shell uh, it's just to manage your data and in with that shell you just you essentially have access to all over the google cloud platform so let's just say if you want to uh, create a compute engine you can do that essentially with the shell commands we will uh, 
we will see this in action shortly in our demo and this is how you can start you, that shell button if you click that shall we just launch on your <coughs> browser itself itself this is how it will look like and uh, this is the uh, code editor also uh, it, it it looks like kind of like a vs code it's the same format and you can also uh, manage your cloud services with the, uh, your android or ios app as well as you can see they have tried to uh, open cloud shell as well but uh, i mean telling from personal experience or um, let's just say itna convenient nahi hota isko android mein browse kar pana like you might not be able to see your commands clearly as well so that's just your call you can either look at your phone for just a monitoring perspective and if you have to do in actual work you can do so from your desktop anyways uh, after this uh, session ends uh, please do some tasks for this week if you have already completed this task that's well and good but if you if someone is not has not started yet with the uh, quests i please recommend you to uh, do these do first quest at least so that you all will get idea uh, what is google cloud platform uh, how are we going to uh, implement our services etc etc and these are some labs which you can <coughs> which you can uh, do to get uh, like really a great idea of what is g cloud and shell and how do we create a vm what is a vm there's a lot of resources available anyways uh, thank you guys uh, thanks a lot and please you can please uh, post your questions in the chat box and we will now actually start with the demo as well uh, over to you garanj all right thank you piyush thank you for the presentation and i hope you guys are not bored so much like yeah it's a bit technical so i apologize okay. to guys if you if i bored you no absolutely not know. yeah that, that was not actually boring so i hope you all are excited to see the demo as well um can you please stop sharing screen? Yeah. yeah so uh, i'm sharing my screen just give me a minute i hope that's visible right yes okay great so like uh, as i uh, you know demo uh, demo you in the last video so uh, this was the thing that we have claimed actually and if you can uh, you know if you read the mail clearly there is a program syllabus from which you can actually reach to this page which will uh, eventually tell you all of your tracks and you know all of your course uh, the quest that you need to do so we will be doing this first quest and when we do so we we actually reach to this page like the create and manage cloud resources and this lab was completed like it was a tour for google cloud a hands on lab so this was completed in the last uh, demo and uh, we'll start with a creating a virtual machine so like creating a virtual machine in, in google cloud is really easy and like if you have created any virtual machine uh, in your uh, uh, PC where the VMware or things. What you generally do is you select the storage amount. You uh, choose the ISO image like of whatever uh, you know operating system you're using, and then you generally boot up. So things are pretty much similar here. And let me quickly fire up the lab. So we'll use our subscription. And by the time it gets started, initiated, like uh, we can read you know the basic overview that we need to have. What we need to do is to create an instance from the Google Cloud install an nginx web server and then you know create a new instance with the g cloud uh, cli like a uh, command line interface as well so we'll surely see how we can do all of that uh, let's just open this console and also copy the password uh, i i've recommended you to do it in incognito but like it's totally your wish if you're doing a normal uh, browser that's totally fine so we'll accept this and let me quickly do the setup. So yeah, we need to agree all of the terms and conditions, right? And as Piyush showed, this is the Google Cloud Shell and it has a persistent storage. That means whatever you do in this machine will be stored permanently on this uh, for you, like for your account, and this is free for all of the users. So let me fire up this and now just go back to what we need to do. So we need to go to task one 
and the task one is to create a new instance from the you know the GUI of the interface, the Google Cloud interface. And these all are the values that we need to consider. So the name of the lab should be GCE lab. Let me just copy the name. It's good practice to copy the names because if you uh, you know don't type the correct names, then they might uh, don't consider your uh, work and uh, you won't be marked. Like we need to check the things. So we need to go to the here compute engine and you know virtual machines and we need to just create a VM instance. Like it's that simple. Go to compute engine and then VM instances. Okay. So it will load up quickly. And we can just hit the Create Instance button. You can also see uh, you know, various things that we need to consider. So as Piyush have told you, we have various regions. Like we have uh, you know, Google Cloud servers in various continents. And also in that continent, we have at various geo uh, geographical locations. So uh, Google are divided into it various regions and zones. So we can actually select that So first. You know, here we need to put the name that was GCE Labs, and for now you can skip the labels. Labels are there for you know identifying and grouping the machines when we uh, do some uh, you know complex task. So the reason uh, here is US Central One and Zone is US Central One F. So I guess that is the thing that they want. So it's by default, and we want series N1 series and with two CPU, two virtual CPUs. Sorry, so we can you know set, um, just close this for now. Here we can choose the series. Series is basically, you know, Google are divided uh, various uh, processors and memory stuffs according to their pricing. But as this is a lab, so it's free for now. So we want N1 series. And by default, it gives us one virtual CPU and 3.75 GB of memory. But actually, we want something more. We want two vCPUs. And we can so we want 7.5 gigabytes of RAM. So let me just check this out. This is N1 standard two, like two vCPUs and 7.5 GB of memory. And what we need to do is we can we have uh, we want 10 GB of a uh, persistent disk with Debian uh, Buster on it. We can also you know uh, uh, can deploy some containers directly onto a VM, but for now we will be just using a persistent disk of 10 GB with Debian uh, 10 Buster. So these are all of the uh, you know by default values. They just uh, given us because for the sake of ease of doing the labs. We also want to allow HTTP network and you will know why they have you know asked to allow HTTP network. So we need to allow here and then all you need to do is create. But if you want to say, uh, if you want to have, uh, you know, the use it via the command line, we just need to copy this uh, command, but uh, you can skip that as well. So let me just create this. And it will be created in a few minutes. Like it takes some time to allocate the resources and fire up the machines. By the time we can, you know, go and uh, see what we need to do. So we need to SSH. I hope you all are familiar with SSH. It is a tool to, you know, connect to the virtual servers. Uh, if you are a Windows user, you can use PuTTY as well. So you need to configure that. But uh, Google have given us, you know, their SSH in the browser, so we don't have to, you know, do hassles and worries about that. So it will be fire up in like a few minutes or a few seconds, depending on the resources. Also, the second task we need to do is to create an Nginx server. Um, I hope you all are familiar with Nginx. It is a server, and it can be also you know worked as a reverse proxy server. So this is used to uh, deploy our applications to the web, like uh, any simple application, or it can be also used as a, uh, any general server. Um, so I guess yeah, that can uh, that's created. The status is good. We need to just SSH into it. And Google will give us everything into a browser. So that's a plus point. So these all are the Linux command, uh, like sudo basic sudo commands. And the, uh, that will give you the root access. And this is the apt get for the Ubuntu and things. So what we need to do, uh, sorry. So this will be, uh, so this is the place, like this is the computer that's there in their server and I'm accessing it via the SSH. And I can actually, you know, do some basic updates. So, uh, and that will actually update all of the repositories. It's a good idea to, you know, actually update and then install anything. And all you need to do is sudo apt get install nginx 
that's why so this will actually install nginx and dash y flag is used to you know allow accept any um, like question if they ask for installation purposes so like it's there in server so internet speed is really good it's not like ours which is you know fluctuating so yeah it's, it's installed right uh now it's installed but we also need to check sometime like uh, if our uh, nginx is running and for that we need to use this command ps aw uh, ox uh, grep nginx what it does is basically um, it lists out all the processes that are running on the computer and grep is command to use to you know find the particular name so as you can see uh, we have nginx worker processes these are running so this is just a you know um, just for the information sake don't get you know feared with these things these are uh, really normal and now what we can do is we can actually check if our uh, you know server is running on to the external ip so yeah here it is the external ip and yeah our server is running right so we can actually do anything here change uh, you know uh, the files the server or like a website and it will eventually get updated here now as i said uh, we need to allow the http traffic if we if we haven't allowed that then this page won't uh, be you know accessible so we need to allow that if you haven't allowed in by default you can also change that via you know here view network details and uh, we can actually change the things like if you haven't allowed it by that at the time of creating you can also change that value anyway so that was a basic uh, you know our task and let's just check if our task is done so yeah it will check and so yeah we got 50 points you can see you can also click this button to actually uh, see the actual task now the next task that we need to do is uh, do all of the things that i've done uh, like in the gui via the command line and it is really easy to do like all we need to use is gcloud this is a cli toolkit provided by the google cloud and this is a simple command so gcloud compute instances create so like uh, go uh, we we give uh, you know command to gcloud that go and create an instance with this name and this is the machine type if you remember this was the machine type that we selected here uh, n1 to v uh, n1 standard 2 so this is the machine type that we need to you know choose and this is the zone that we need to select. So we can actually copy paste or we can type depends on what you are comfortable with. Just go here onto the cloud shell and um, let it be open. And we can just paste this thing and it will actually create a new instance. And this will also be, you know, this will ask for uh, authorization. So please allow that. And this will also be uh, reflected here, like as soon as this will be created we can see that here it takes some time so yeah you can see that we have gc lab 2 in the same region with the different ips and here are the details like the zone that we selected the machine type that we selected so that's how you can you know actually create it's still creating because it's not completely ready and you can refresh that to check so now it's running we can also ssh into that just like the previous one no uh, issue uh, like no differences and uh, we can also check the progress so yeah it's already 100 so that means we are done with the lab also there are a lot of things that you can read and you can actually you know learn so whatever i have learned uh, of the google cloud is because of the quick labs labs so yeah they're really good and self-explanatory so you can do almost pretty much anything you can also you know uh, continue to ssh via this uh, g cloud command so like for example we, if you don't want a new window you just want to continue here you can do that as well and this will you know just ask for the rse key pair or like anything you can do cool and this will create the key and now you will be you know ssh into this uh, write the same key that you have it and yeah you're here so sudo apt and this will you know work and do that server so that was the first lab that i have to demo and like basically i hope you've learned this thing and you will actually get this uh page on your profile you can end that for now and yeah so like 
we can now uh, move to the next lab which is you know getting started with the google cloud shell also please remember like if you have some odd thing here so you have to do any one of that like you can do both of them but uh, like for the sake of credit and for the sake of uh, you know counting into your swags profile you can do any one of them so i have just did this you can do any one of them that's up to you uh, the next thing i want to demo is to you know getting started with the google cloud shell and g cloud so we can also demo that lab you have some tasks like configuring your R environment, and like, by the time let me just fire this up. And also, like we need to log out from here as soon as we are done with the lab, we can actually go out and close this thing. Uh, this is just for uh, my you know comfort uh, person, like nothing special to do like this. So you can also open Google Cloud uh, Console. Um, and now, just like similarly to the previous lab, we need to log in. And yeah, it will be logged in. So what we need to do is we need to configure our environment. So like. Uh, as we have said you previously, we have various role, uh, regions and zones. So these are the regions, and we have the various zones in them. Like you, Central US have four zones, Western US have two zones. Similarly, we have various zones. So we can, uh, you know, use this command like gcloud config get value to our default zone region, and we can also, you know, identify uh, our default region and zone. So I guess that's up. It depends on your network and you know how quick these things happen. So the uh, cloud shell is running up. All right, like if you want to see your uh, complete, you know, uh, details of your project, like this is your project basically that is created by the quick labs. So if you want to see complete details of your project, you can just uh, use this command and copy the, uh, you know, paste the project ID. So this is your project ID. So all you need to do is just type um, G Cloud Compute. Uh, sorry for the typo. Subscribe, paste the project uh, ID, and that will actually. Oops, there's something missing. Sorry. We need to put the project flag as well. And that will uh, again ask for the authorization. This will be uh, all of your, you know, informatics. Like this might seem to you something cryptic, but if you uh, read it, uh, like, Thoroughly, so you can see like we have the zone set as to uh, set to US Central One A, and the region as US Central One, and this is all of the metadata that you want to maybe see or maybe not. Like depends on you. Now what we need to do is we need to set some of our uh, environment variables. So we need to set our project ID. We can just copy this. This is a Linux. Um, this is the Linux command. And we need to now put our project ID there. This will actually, you know, export our environment variable named project ID with this value. Also, we need to put our zone. So zone can be. You can see the zone here. US Central One A. It's just copied, and we need to do this. Now these two are the environment variables set in the you know G Cloud uh, shell. And if you want to see any of them, all we need to do is echo, and then the name of that variable. So yeah, you can see the value. Similarly for the zone. Uh, so yeah, this is how uh, you know you. Ex uh, export any variable into your local uh, uh, into any Linux machine basically 
and now this is the same thing that i've elaborated you um we need to create a virtual machine with a google cloud actually this is very similar to the thing that we have done previously but with you know the zone flag as well we can just copy this thing and we can paste it here this will actually you know create a instance of with the name gc lab 2 with the machine type uh, n1 standard 2 and in the zone us central 1a so we can also see that here live like go to compute engine go to vm instances and it will actually um, open up your uh, you know ui uh, viewer so you can see like we are uh, starting with this uh, lab oh, sorry oh, my bad uh, we're starting the container virtual machine right so like this is that you can read actually all of the things are commands are really uh, elaborated really well and documented well as well it's just running i hope yeah so it's done we can now check our progress here yeah so our lab is done basically but we have some other tasks uh, like they mark here but we need to do, do these tasks as well like we need to install the components so uh, like if you have worked with any of other clis we generally have some add-ons or like general softwares have add-ons uh, like if the browser you're using chrome add-ons and things like that so g cloud also supports some add-ons like this is the google cloud sdk to have something in like development or things like that you can actually do that and it will install all of these uh, you know google cloud sdk for us uh, also uh, you know if you if you explore this thing there's something really uh, interactive uh, and attractive as well let me just show you so now what we can do is we can actually you know have some references this is the shell that's fired up and this shell is better than the this like old shell so basically if you want to have anything you can see we have we get some order recommendation just like the vs code and we can actually say something like compute you know the cheat sheet is here compute and what describe anything like uh, you know we can compute instances describe so it's hard to uh, remember all of that in the first go but eventually when you do these labs uh, again and again you will uh, learn how these things are there and then i guess the project described and the name of the lab that we can just put the tab button i'm pressing the tab to get auto recommendation and you can hit that so yeah actually we haven't you know uh, told the zone for it okay as i've shown to our zone variable yes so you can see you know we have all of the details of the virtual machine that we've just created the gc lab 2. so this is a really good uh add-on to our simple g cloud and like connecting with the uh, vm via the ssh like i showed you last time as well and using the home directory so basically as uh, we have told you like anything in this particular cloud shell is persistent that means if you do some changes to the files in this lab it will be persistent even if you log out so like all we need to do is for example vi uh, it's just uh, editor when This is the simple batch RC file and like don't get confused with it. This is all relevant to Linux. I'm just showing you a demo. Uh, and uh, like, uh, for example, this right, whenever, uh, you know, we launch the terminal, we want to greet us. So hello, uh, DDSC. And then just write quick and then source the file basically. And now what we need to do is we need to again start bash. And example, you know, see, uh, we have this command running. So every time we uh, run the terminal, 
we will uh, actually get this thing. So this is all persistent. Even if you log out and log back in, this will remain uh, like persistent. It won't erase as soon as you close the machine. So that's what the meaning of this, you know, using the home directory or doing anything. And like this is the basic uh, testing or understanding. So the three basic ways to interact with Google Cloud uh, services are command line and Google Cloud Console and the client libraries, right? I hope that's true. Yeah. So that's all for this lab. And we're done for the lab too. And I guess the times is already up. So we will be able to show this these two labs. In future, in the next sessions, we will be you know uh, explaining more about Kubernetes and the load balances and how you can do all of these labs. So I guess that's all from my side. A demo purpose, and you can actually ask any of your questions we have. Thank you, Varanj. Uh, thanks a lot for that uh, informative demo. Uh, I hope our participants uh, did get a nice idea out of Google Cloud uh, Console uh, from that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, I guess let's just head to the uh, Q&A session. Uh, this session and this session was quite uh, long, I guess. It went. Yeah, it went quite long. I hope people are yeah. bored. <laughs> we tried to explain some of the uh, fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, basics of uh, what is VM, what is Zoom, etc. etc. Uh, guys, you can just uh, post your questions in the QA. I guess we have to start QA. I guess start the QA, like you can okay. Uh, I have uh, I have started the QA section. Uh, if, if you guys please. So if you have any questions, please feel free to you know drop it, drop it there. So there were actually uh, two questions. Uh, like uh, just uh, when I started, the uh, there were a few I guess questions or something. Okay, uh, it was by Aryan Mishra. Also that VM in spare time I make one. And yeah, uh, Aryan, uh, it's uh, the RDP thing is uh, it's it's really. You know, when I tried it first time, I liked uh, it a lot. Uh, it's just like uh, you have uh, your uh, desktop. Uh, this. Uh, desktop I'm working that uh, on uh, just in the cloud so I can just log in and you know go to my office uh, go log in from my office computer and uh, log to that same remote desktop so my data is you know synced from everywhere and uh, Akhil has had asked uh, why is Kubernetes uh, deployment and management task before the introduction to containerization quest uh, okay, it's uh, just uh, basically for the uh, um, like for informative purposes, like what is Kubernetes, how will you deploy uh, Kubernetes, etc. Uh, you can see the same for uh, like virtual machines as well. Like we have not discussed uh, firewall and stuff in the mm -hmm. first quest, but just to get an over, just to give an overview to uh, like users, I guess they have uh, added in the uh, first quest as well. Yeah, to add Piyush, like yeah, it's I, I I agree with that. Like if you haven't if you have no idea about containerization, it will be a little alienated of like learning about Kubernetes. I see, I see, I know, and, and that's why I'm saying. But uh, I mean that course is not created by us. Uh, that yeah. is actually created by the Google Cloud team, and they might have put a little bit of uh, uh, like thinking or brainstorming yeah, like what to. So the only thing I see right now is to, just to give an overview of like, the ZKE, I guess. Yeah, they just want to show like they yeah. have a platform of Google Kubernetes engine. So yeah, just to get to familiarize. It's just to catch interest. Like if you don't know what is this, you might have want to uh, learn. Uh, yeah. Uh, cool, guys. Uh, no questions. All right. Like you, if please you don't don't tell, tell. please don't tell. This session was uh, that boring that you've just muted and left. Oh God, we're not lecturer, but <laughs> 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 like, they can do some errors if you have told any good. Yes, if you are like too bad that they have it standard. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, perhaps now we can uh, like end so if this there's no questions then if you want to ask any other uh, questions uh, then like even if you don't have any questions right now i would please uh i recommend karunga, please aap log ye labs ko jal -jal 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 -jal. actually uh, i mean i'm sure you guys might face some issues in it's better if you don't I and mean, but it, still if you face some issues please just uh, message on our discord server if you have any doubt about the Google Cloud uh, platform or this program regarding now, or if you have a general question, ho, so you can ask right now. Like, because we see people, so it could be okay. 
यस यस अगर किसी और जीडीएस लिंक so i guess that works so is ko main bol dilu kya video call matlab video pe hi taki wo aise bol sake try kar lo agar wo apna mic on kar pae to i guess i guess nahi mera not intentions of my or do you hear us yeah mic on nahi ho payega yaar tumhe type karna padega yeah so mic aap please try type kar do aapko jo bhi ye doubt hai hum Yeah, if I put screen badges, yeah. अरे नहीं यार, this is a this is like a very uh, interview point of view से अगर हम बात करें like aside from this lot anything which you mention on your resume, uh, uh, interview would assume like you know at least what what are what is that which you are putting in your resume. Like if you just uh, like uh, let's just say if you just put uh, I have uh, attended this cloud event or something. If you ask what have you done there, you there must be something which you might have learned. अपने वहाँ पे बताना पड़ेगा कि मैं वहाँ पे क्या क्या सीखा वहाँ पे VM बनाना है जो भी है networking zones ये वो कुछ ना कुछ पता होना चाहिए आप अपने LinkedIn या अपने resume में ऐसे भी कुछ मत डालिए जिस मतलब आप explain ना कर पाए होंगे. in general you know hum log hamesha kehte hain we say like it's better to have uh, like nothing or basically less thing in resume than to have the fake things because exactly. yet recruiter have the experience they get to know like what you are faking and what you are not so it's better to have the genuine thing rather than anything like that so if you are comfortable with this then only mention otherwise it's okay and like i have seen you have asked about linkedin profile so i can say like you can mention they see your linkedin but uh, something that is really on your top like they generally don't scroll that much into it because it takes time you know so like they put on to your top of uh, of your linkedin page so you can add it no doubt you can add it but you may or may not have to if you have idea of all of that yeah telling them basic yeah absolutely yeah absolutely i don't think you will uh, need to explain what yeah. is cloud from the layman terms Okay. So, like if you have you are applying for general or like general software engineer too, so they will you know barely ask about what is just to have like if you have some idea about the things that you have done, like you don't be asked something deep into the cloud or things. So, please feel free about. Apart from that, as you said, Harsh, uh, basically, what you should do. So basically, type a little bit about development, uh, seeing about development. Uh, so like you know, pick any technology. It might be Android development, Google Cloud, or like a cloud engineering or a machine learning. Or anything else you like, explore stuff and uh, pick a development field, and then start you know working on personal projects and uh, uh, you know pa- uh, taking part in hackathons and other events and also contributing to open source. Like those uh, general things will most definitely help you. What is the benefit of LinkedIn? There are a lot of benefits here. Uh, so for example um, like jitne bhi mujhe abhi tak internship mili hai wo sahi se mujhe linkedin ke through mili kyunki maine wahan pe apni jo kya kehte hain apni cheezon ke bare mein post kara tha kya seekh raha hu ya main is program se likh hua ya fir us sari program se likh hua ya apni sahi cheeze to tumhe networking ka ek bahut acha opportunity milti hai in linkedin you get a lot of benefits out of linkedin and uh, you know uh, it is a great platform uh, nevertheless so try and create a profile that internship pass kare uh, Internship it's essentially uh, LinkedIn is essentially a Facebook for corporate work. <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, internship, how to do? I know there are 
websites, I guess. Uh, there is intern chala, agent is, so you can go there and you know put your resume out and all that stuff. Apart from that, there is also this hack that you can uh, instead of just you know applying there, uh, go to the company, a uh, LinkedIn profile or uh, like you know any other profile, and uh, contact with the uh, hiring manager. Or if it is a startup, you can even go to the CEO and talk about. That these are my past projects and my past uh, achievements and my past contributions, and so I think that I will be a great fit for your company. Perhaps you can like take an interview of me uh, or something like along the lines of that. And most uh, most of the time, you know, if you are uh, well enough, uh, they might uh, give you an interview. So that is a like a really good way of you know making sure that you at least get an interview. See, okay, like yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, Aryan, like there won't be any answer to that question here. Like that will be, um, you know, really off topic with the GDSC. But like highest on campus placement in mate, like what you're asking for, either like the salary or what. Um, but generally, like these topics are. Going to be the salary. But yeah, we will learn another question. Next year. This time, uh, the placements are like good enough, I guess. Uh, like. If I talk about uh, highest off-campus placement, I'm not entirely sure if it was on campus or off-campus. I guess it is above, either it is 67 lakh or it is above one crore. I'm not entirely sure. It is somewhere between the two. But again, yeah. that is something like uh, we can't, you know, say anything on on comment on that. So yeah, it's better to be. Apart from that, chat Microsoft ne 42 ka package diya hai, for clean budget. Not sure, but we. But like, in general, you can expect like this year was a good year for you know placements. Yeah, in general, it was a good year. Yeah. Uh, is it necessary to have a LinkedIn profile? Absolutely. Uh, LinkedIn profile ka hona hai, because you have to have a in the end. So it is like you know you can post about your achievements, and if you want to teach anybody or if you want to talk about anything, you can post it there. And uh, like you know, uh, as you grow your LinkedIn profile, you will also start getting messages from other people. Asking either for your help or offering you opportunities that you might have not gotten otherwise. So yeah, try be active on LinkedIn and Twitter because those are the uh, spaces where most of the developers are active. And we have a question as well. Would you like to answer that, Aditya? Like certificate one. Uh, uh, so, workshop ka certificate like, uh, yeah, the workshop ka certificate ki hai na, ki, like you are getting already getting you know that uh, cloud Google Cloud certificate. So uh, like Google Cloud batches, you can uh, put it on your LinkedIn and uh, Twitter, like and all of the other uh, social media you are active on. And that might be really helpful for you. But the point is that if you have event, you can do it in the session. session you have attend kara. So, in the end, that might not help you as much uh, in any place. So, for example, uh, starting I have not have any certificate in the I have no certificate in the have no course in For example, Goranj has a Kubernetes certificate. So, a few certifications matter because they can help you out in getting jobs. Agar, uh, I would just say, if you have a cloud ka aisa kuch, uh, dikhana hai na, ke certifications, to, uh, uh, if you are in the early, uh, like the starting, if you are starting, then you Google Cloud certifications, ke kuch pe the, foundational yes. course, tha, thoda sa professional course. Tha. Try do, try, please try do that. उसकी काफी ज्यादा वैल्यू है इसी तरह से कुछ सिस्को के कोर्सेज होते हैं इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट नेटवर्किंग इफ यू आर टॉकिंग जैसे कुछ सिस्को के कोर्स होते हैं सीसीएनए सीसीएनपी अगर आपको नेटवर्किंग में जाना है क्लाउड के कुछ एडब्ल्यूएस के कोर्सेज होते हैं अगर आप उन चीजों को डालोगे उनकी बहुत ज्यादा वैल्यू है पर इस सेशन की ज्यादा तरफ कोई वैल्यू नहीं होगी तो वी आर नॉट यू नो गिविंग यू एनी कॉल इट वाज जस्ट एन इंफॉर्मेशन सेशन दैट यू कुड you, know, you can just post on your LinkedIn. Uh, we had fun attending that event. Yeah, like generally. Thank you, yes, uh, Aden, for joining me. Uh, yeah. Hello, Abhi. So yeah, uh, like you should try and focus a little bit more about on uh, the part of things, and side by side also, you know, go along with development. So we are already. Is there any? Uh, is there any other? Uh, can you post? Yeah, please. Uh, that will be posted on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. The recording will be posted on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube channel. Uh, is there any uh, uh, specific doubt regarding uh, anything uh, of cloud fundamentals or uh, 30 days of uh, Google Cloud in general? Is there any uh, other, doubt, other doubt regarding that? Uh, uh, see, like 
covering in these kind of like sessions will be really hard because people you know might come and might not but like we are planning for something what we can do is we can do a discord live maybe if you all are interested like in in the late nights or in the nights we can do a discord live while any one of us are doing the labs and then you can follow us along i will that i think that's will that work but again no surety on that but for sure we'll try to you know do that right soon other than that uh, if uh, please uh, try to do those on your own i would suggest and uh, if you if you stuck if you get stuck in any step just message on our discord as uh, most of uh, just already doing uh, that and uh, we also get idea like which lab is going to be uh, a little bit difficult for the <coughs> for the students uh anything about the cloud shell occasionally goes out of order it's mostly due to traffic uh, like when quick labs when this event just launched there was a lot of traffic on uh, quick labs and that's why uh, google cloud uh, shell was sometimes not able to load that is uh, as answered by one of google's employees uh, that was because uh, quick labs we get pulled some resources like we studied resource pooling quick labs has a separate resource pool that is because it is a test environment and if you just go to normal google cloud uh, but that's not yeah. that's a little bit separate and so they have allocated some small resources to uh, quick labs that's why uh, due to traffic was in no. general we have quotas for everything so we have yeah, to exactly. like a quick but uh, there was a fix to that as well uh, if still you are facing that issue some uh, like some day there's a three dot uh, uh, button in that you can click and click on f i i'll just uh, type it out you can uh, click on that uh, ephemeral mode i guess that's the thing mm -hmm. uh, you can click on that and that then that will just yeah, that's um, a quick, like quick. I hope so. And in general, you can you know wait for some time or even close and reopen the window. That was, uh, that uh, ephemeral ephemeral uh, mode was uh, provided to me by uh, Quick Labs as a like customer support agent. So I guess that's the official information I can share with you. Right so now. okay, I guess no more questions. So like we can perhaps close it out. Yeah. Uh, thank Quite you for you who stick through, and I hope it was uh, informational and. Then uh, you had fun uh, so perhaps you can uh, like i will end the meeting now uh, if you have any other questions or anything as you can uh, post on discord so like thank you again for joining us thank you everyone goodbye thank, thank you, you.